Hi, I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. And welcome to Sofa Reviews. Today we're reviewing Dracula 2000. According to IMDb, this movie was picked up by the producers because of the name Dracula 2000, wanting to get it out for the millennium. Amusingly enough, they had to change the name to Dracula 2001 anyway. So, after a fairly pointless opening scene, we cut to an old man buying a crossbow from Johnny Lee Miller. It turns out the old man is the grandson of Van Helsing himself. And then a love interest shows up. There seems to be a bit of tension between them, but who cares about that? It's time for action! So the guards are knocked out by these criminals, who then hack into the vault. They get in there to find there's nothing of value, and it turns out that love interest is in on it, and dating one of the criminals, so I guess that closes that plot point. We cut to the old man, who's injecting himself with leech blood. We're here for money, Marcus! The skulls are to scare us. The crosses, the coffin, all of it. It's a grand spanking mind fuck to scare off thieves. Oh, oh I am not touching that fucking coffin. Wanna get paid? Get it open! They try to open the coffin, but two of them get impaled on spikes instead. It's a bit of an oversight to have machines that splatter blood everywhere when you're keeping Dracula in that coffin. The old man runs down to the vault, only to find that the bad guys and the coffin have disappeared. So now's a perfect time to cut to a girl having a nightmare. She's Mary, who we learn later is the old man's daughter. But just keep thinking, Mary, that maybe if you had a man in your bed, you I might not. need the man in my head, thanks. Yeah, sex will solve all your mental trauma. So the old man decides to set off after the coffin and tell Simon to jog on. God damn it! Look, I told you, this thing is completely sealed. After watching the criminal's inept attempts to open the coffin, it turns out it's really simple. It's never explained why he doesn't go to his friends once the coffin starts spilling smoke after it's been opened, but it does let you know that he deserved his inevitable death. What are those leeches? Still juicing this thing. And now a contender for dumbest thing in the movie! <laughs> so now that Dracula's killed him, as per Queensby rules, another lone henchman is sent in. He also gets killed, and it turns out Dracula is a messy eater. <laughs> and then we finally meet Dracula, played by Gerard Butler. After shooting Dracula a few times, the gang leader shoots a hole in the plane, which neither destroys the plane or kills them. This does, however, let in a little bit of light, which mildly annoys Dracula, so he just summons up a storm. Mary has another dream that we think she gets to see Dracula on the plane. So she decides to go and consult Malcolm Reynolds. I, I mean a priest. Then it's good you're here. The morbid and creepifying, I got no problem with. Long as she does a quiet like. Meanwhile, the old man finds out the plane has crashed and where it is thanks to a news report from Seven of Nine. Simon follows him, but it seems pretty difficult to be stealthy when you're on the same plane as him. At sunset, they're still in the swamp for some reason, and this bit seems rather familiar. This is Valerie Sharp. Reporting on a flight of death that ended in fear. Cut, I screwed up, didn't I? Didn't even notice. But her unprofessionalism and continued mistakes are interrupted by Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> and as Dracula's killed someone else, Mary gets a hallucination during her job at product placement. I mean a music store. Anyway, the old man finds a small town and Simon catches up to him, only to find that the people on the plane have turned into vampires. We also get to see how shouting what you've just said can make up for a lack of acting ability. You understand? We are the undead. The undead! UNDEAD! Do you want a cup of tea? There's no milk. No milk! NO MILK! After some battling, it turns out vampires are only vulnerable to religious symbols if they believe in them. Sorry, sport. I'm an atheist. Simon gets away from the gang leader, only to then get trapped by Selina. Hi. Simon being so useless, he has to be saved by an old man. I'd kill you, but I have no reason not to. So we get some exposition from the old man, revealing that he is in fact the original Van Helsing, using Dracula's blood filtered through leeches to keep himself alive and young, so that he can find a way to finally kill Dracula. He hates God. He is repulsed by all things Christian, but these things do not kill him, no. They only fill him with a rage that makes him even stronger. 
However, we do see in the opening that he received some of Dracula's blood without leeches. So we finally get to the plot, such as it is. Dracula is after Mary because she contains his blood. This is due to the fact that Van Helsing was doped up on it when she was conceived, which also explains why she's been having the visions. After this, we see Selina in a prison cell, clearly sometimes in daylight, but to no ill effect. Luckily, Dracula shows up to save her from this rather tedious scene. As Mardi Gras happens to be on, Simon and Van Helsing have trouble getting around. You try uh, the shop where she works, I will try to find her house. You haven't seen or heard from her in years. How do you know where she works? Dracula heads to the music shop and meets Mary's housemate, Lucy. Well, hello there, random stranger. I don't know what you want with Mary, but come to my house. I don't even need to know your name. Continuing her run of sensible decisions, she has sex with him while Simon finds Mary. Who are you? How did you find me? Is there somewhere we could speak? Perhaps an empty and secluded car park. Mary runs off as Marcus shows up and kicks the crap out of Simon. After a short battle, which really makes me want to go to HMV, Simon manages to win. I just decapitated a guy. I feel good. So Van Helsing searches the house for his daughter, but instead finds death. Mary comes home to find her dead father under the bed. No time for grief though, as Dracula has assembled his angels to help him find Mary. And for some reason, Dracula transforms into a wolf to chase Mary, but Simon shows up to save the day. Are you okay? Also, that wolf just exploded into bats! They run off to the library to do some research. Simon hands Mary a weapon, but decides not to warn her about it at all. Dracula shows up and Simon shows his true brilliance, going in close with a gun and then using a Bible at long range. I thought Christian things were supposed to make him stronger with rage, not burst into flames. Mary goes running through a cemetery where Dracula captures her and teleports her to the final scene of the film. Having lost Mary, Simon goes searching for her, only to run into the three vampire girls from before. Simple Simon. <laughs> he manages to kill Seven of Nine, and so just stands around looking smug. Through flashbacks, Dracula reveals that he is in fact Judas Iscariot. Chosen to suffer like no man before. Yeah, and for his treachery, he was cursed with eternal youth and immortality. Anyway, Mary is shown the captured Simon, and is ordered to bite him to show her loyalty or something. Of course, as I'm sure Simon's quite used to, it turns out she was faking it, and she instead chops off Lucy's head. Guess she needs a new housemate. So Simon and Selina fight it out while Dracula and Mary fight on rooftops. The battle between Dracula and Mary is just ridiculous wire work, although Simon does eventually manage to get the upper hand. Simon. Better make it good. You and I, we could... <laughs> After a brief distraction from Simon, Mary manages to wrap a cord around Dracula's neck and put him the roof. Which gives Dracula the chance to get strangled while looking at a crappy picture of Jesus. He drops Mary, but surely as a vampire she can survive a fall from that height. I don't know why they're trying to make any tension here. Because it apparently works that way, Dracula turns her back into a human. As the sun rises, Dracula burns to death. But wait, I thought Van Helsing tried everything. Well, come on, if you want to make sure a vampire's dead, you've got to hang them while in sunlight underneath cheap religious iconography. Everyone knows that! I am now the keeper of what remains. If the soul of Dracula still flickers in his ashes, I will keep it forever contained. And so it ends. In conclusion, there are some pros to this movie. There are some good special effects where, when you see through the cameras that Dracula has no reflection while attacking people, it still looks pretty cool. It's also unintentionally funny. It's so stupid, you just have to laugh at it at parts. The film just ends up being really stupid. You've got this gang that have spent God knows how much money on all the technology and the plane to break into this vault. They don't even know what they're stealing. Somehow, the old man gets the blood from the leeches, so he apparently disarms all these traps on his own. As well, then suddenly, the old man gets to America. He knows where his daughter works. And he has a recent picture of her, even though she explains she hasn't seen him in 12 years. 
most of the dialogue is ridiculous. You can see whoever wrote it thought they were being funny, but it actually is just really dumb and annoying. Yes. Let's see. I was named after the Peanuts character. Well, at least they managed to wrap it up and leave Mary guarding the ashes of Dracula. So there can't be a sequel, at least. No. There's two. Ah!